Good morning from Waitomo, North Island, New Zealand. We have just enjoyed a complimentary continental breakfast from our B&B. We have a relatively jam-packed but very exciting day. And so to start our day, we are headed to Waitomo Caves. Let's go. I've just arrived to the White Tunnel Caves. And this is where we're going to be seeing glowworms, which is very exciting. It's apparently one of like the top attractions here in New Zealand. However, we were just informed that you can't take photos inside the cave. You are kind of under the impression it's no flash photography, and I'm under the impression that it's no photography at all. So we'll find out. And we'll show you what we can. were amazing they were so spacious the ceilings were super high I was shocked to see how white they were compared to the outside to me it reminded me of basically compacted salt or even the patterns on it were kind of like the melting wax from a candle I thought it was really beautiful but just some history on the caves themselves they actually started underwater the caves are made of limestone and were formed like 30 million years ago. And it was only with the Earth's movement from shifting tectonic plates that they finally rose above sea level and were exposed to the air and rainfall, which actually eroded the limestone. And that's what formed the cracks and crevices and created the river that runs within the cave. And with that river and the abundance of water then came life, hence why there are now glowworms in there. So we also learned a little bit more about these fascinating creatures. It turns out that they have a life cycle that's really not that far off of a butterfly or a moth. So they start with an egg, they then hatch into glowworms, and that's actually how they stay for the majority of their lifespan. And then they become a pupa, and then they form into a fly, but they only last as a fly for about three days because they end up not having any digestive system or anything like that. So they literally do that to reproduce, create more glowworms, and then pass on. Glowworms stay in the larva stage for about nine months and it's interesting because the reason that they glow is not just for fun it is actually purely for a way of hunting that they've evolved over millions of years and in order for the glow ones to hunt they actually create this little line of silk which is really not that far off of a spider's web but in order to attract the prey onto the silk they then shine this kind of bluey green light that fools the prey into thinking that it's a way out of the cave and then they get trapped on the silk and the glowworms eat whatever ends up landing on there. So it's actually a pretty genius hunting technique which is also shared by a number of deep sea fish. It's just beautiful to look at. The caves are so dark and when you look up to the ceiling and see the glowworms it's like looking up in the night sky and seeing all the stars. It's truly incredible and it is obviously a shame that we couldn't capture any of it but it is with good reason this is such a special thing that it would be a crying shame for us to mess with it certainly while we couldn't show you exactly why i hope that our descriptions are enough to make you want to come here because truly this is one of the most unique experiences that i think i personally have ever had totally agree it was really worth it we hope we've inspired you to come here and i guess moving on with our day absolutely jacqueline's going to tell us what the plan is here so the plan is to do the ruakuri bushwalk which is about two and a half kilometers 
then we'll come back and go to the Waitomo Lookout Point and the village, which is only 650 meters. Sounds good. So, let's go. This has been an absolutely lovely walk, but what we didn't realize is that this is not a loop that's an out and back. So we are now needing to head back to the car. One tip that we should give you is that you'll come across farmland pretty soon into the walk and it can get a little bit difficult to navigate. So just make sure you keep the stream on your left hand side and do go over the fences because they're only to keep the cows and sheep in, but like as a human, you should step over them. Yeah, and whatever you do, follow the orange triangles. They are gonna help you on your route. under the impression that we were doing the Wurakuri bushwalk. What we actually did was the Waitomo walkway to the bushwalk. So it was going to take an hour or 2.5 kilometers to actually get there. Either way, it was a great walk. And now it is time to move on to the second spot for the day. And this is what you get when you bring a nerd to New Zealand. So we are here at the Hobbiton movie set tour. So this will be taking us around the Shire set in the Hobbit's homeland. I am super excited for this, but I do understand if you're not a Hobbit or Lord of the Rings fan, this is the least exciting thing for you. Really sorry about that. Come back in a few minutes on this video and hopefully we'll be onto something else. My name is Ellie and I'm going to be your tour guide for today through our little snippet of Middle Earth. In order to make the actors appear taller, they made these hobbit homes small, which is a technique called forced perspective, and this particular door is only 60% human height. This tree is completely fake and consists of 250,000 handcrafted leaves. this real estate listing in front of you. Are you interested? It's a little small. It's 
cozy. But it fits our budget. Yes, absolutely. This is the tree that stopped the location scouts on their helicopter and inspired this entire film to be made here on this, what is now a set. We get to go inside. They only just built this about two months ago. This is awesome. Cap the tour off, we're now at the Green Dragon Pub where we've all been given a free pint. Cheers! Cheers! Thanks for coming with us! Sadly our time at Hobbiton movie set has come to an end and we are now on our way to our hotel for the night in Taupo. But I thought it would be interesting to get all of our perspective on what we thought of the tour because basically my two cousins and I were relative newbies. I read The Hobbit in grade five and have really no recollection of it. None of us have seen the movies, whereas Nick is a really big fan. So let's see what everyone thinks. Tell us your thoughts. I have seen other people who are really big on The Lord of the Rings go to Hobbiton and they've absolutely loved it and they just keep on kind of extolling the virtues of it whenever you go to New Zealand you have to go visit it and so it's proven if you are in any way a fan of The Hobbit or any of kind of Tolkien's books or anything like that then that's one reason to go but also if you are somebody who really appreciates artistic quality anybody who is kind of into the making of films and TV or anything like that, then really this is something that will still appeal to you, even if you're not necessarily big on fandom. And I expected that it was going to be good, I just didn't realise how good it was going to be. Like every single detail was accounted for, it was so intricately done, and that was even just on the outside of every single hobbit hole. The fact that we actually got to go inside was another thing entirely because then that showed again just how meticulous they were to make sure that this felt like a true home, like it was lived in. And yeah, I just absolutely was bowled over by it. Obviously, you know, parts of the set were built and obviously they're not intended to be there, but most of the things 
that you saw that were growing were actually like living. So the apple trees were real, the pear trees were real, the vegetable plots were all growing actual vegetables. And to just be able to kind of integrate the natural scenery and the land into the set that you're building, it just really made it special. And so yeah, that for me was another thing that is checked off the list and certainly a great way to start New Zealand. As someone who hasn't read the book, books and has not seen any of the movies. I was absolutely amazed at how the Shire fit into its environment. It was obvious that when they went searching for the set, for the location, they found the perfect location. And the detail of the set designers, at every turn, it was like there's more, there's more, there's more. It, just, it was blew me away. And, then, and now I'm going what I truly thought was really an added bonus experience was when we went inside the Hobbit Hall. We were allowed to interact with all the delicate set pieces. So, for example, I laid on the Hobbit bed. I played with a Hobbit toy. And I saw others climbing into the teeny tiny Hobbit bath. So if you really want to experience the world of the hobbits, I highly recommend flying all the way to New Zealand just for this. It's no longer Nick and Rachel recommend, it's also Jacqueline recommends. <laughs> <laughs> like my sister, I haven't seen any of the Hobbit or Lord of the Rings movie and I was fascinated by the attention to detail in the Hobbit home that we got to go in. Right down to knives and forks, the bakery, the, the kitchen, the home bathtub. It was just incredible. I've never seen anything like that before and I'll have to sit down and watch the movies one day. Yeah, just to echo what everyone else has said, the details of the set decoration were phenomenal and I mean what a skill set you have to have to do that job and it's definitely inspired all of us who haven't seen the movies to really want to. So... As my cousin Jacqueline said, it was well worth the money spent even for those of us who had never seen it. After an amazing day, we have now arrived at our hotel in Taupo. So that's gonna about wrap it up for today. So until next time, Take care. And keep smiling. Good morning. Swamp. So we also learned a little bit more about these fascinating creatures. And it turns out that they have and it turns out that they have a life cycle.